Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hope Daily this morning. Great to be with you this morning. Um, we are going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 18 this morning, so it's in the description above. Um, I'll grab a Bible, um, and please say in the comments if you're watching this morning, just say, yeah, good morning, and let's be church family together as we come before the Lord uh, to hear from him and to listen to him, and I pray that this encourages you today, especially on this theme of power. I think when we feel so powerless um, as the government make new announcements, as we have our lives um, adjusted and you know things taken out of our control by coronavirus, I think there's a, a temptation to want to grab hold of power in ways maybe that aren't helpful, but also a desperation and a need to feel like we're in control. And so I hope that this morning helps you um, and equips you for that. So, so let me just pray um, and let's yeah, let's just come before the Lord and uh, yeah, pray and expect that he will speak to us this morning. So Father, Lord, we come before you in this time as um, so often, Father, our lives feel out of control. Um, and Lord, we confess that we come before you as people who so often want to take control and gain power for all the wrong reasons, Father, because we fail to trust you. And so Lord, I just pray that in this moment now, you would help us to realign ourselves to you but father you'd gather our our thoughts um, back upon you and you'd center us father in the deep truths of the gospel um, and help us yeah just to come before you and be filled by you this morning in jesus name amen amen well in 2 samuel chapter 18 it's an interesting chapter basically what happens is uh I mean, it's it's kind of it comes at the end of a long section of story, really, and and it starts in chapter t chapter ten of two Samuel, where we start to see things start to really unravel and go wrong. So in ten to eleven, we see David abuses his power and he takes Bathsheba, and then a few chapters later, we see Ammon, one of David's sons, abuses his power and takes Tamar, his like half sister, and then we see Absalom then abuse his power and take the kingdom. And so there's this long kind of like series of people in David's family, starts with David, and then it, the sin works its way out in the rest of the family, of people basically ele being elevated or taking positions of power and then using that position of power to basically use and abuse and take things that are not rightly theirs. And I think um, it's so difficult because as, as, as we were praying, as we are thinking about the start, we are so often tempted to do that. I think especially during this time when we're in the this pandemic we we want to be in control and yet so many things are being taken out of our control and so there is this real temptation to want to kind of grab hold of control over whatever we can whether that's at home with your family whether that's at work um whether that's yeah online offline wherever it is you find yourself when that your kids are going crazy there's a temptation to want to use your power as a parent to take control of that situation um, and stop them from, you know, doing the wrong thing, basically. Um, but so there's a very, there's a subtle difference between good ways to use power and bad ways to use power. And I think parenting is a great example because often the, the best way is that we use our power and authority to bring about and basically to manifest love because we love our kids and we want the best for them. And it might be the same with, you know, people that you have responsibility for at work or um, maybe your your spouse or maybe, I don't know, um, any other kind of situation you end up in where you, you end up in a position of power or authority. You can either use that for love or for self-gain. And I think so often we're obviously tempted to use it for self-gain. That's what we see in, in this in this chapter. Um, I think power and control are supposed to bring about an expression of who the father is and he uses his authority and power to, to love whereas so often we're tempted to use it to control for our own gain and that's the, kind of what we see in this chapter so Absalom he he elevates himself to this position of king and he just names it for himself he goes and takes over the kingdom and then in this chapter we see that he goes um well David comes against him in battle against Absalom and they're fighting together and we know that Absalom is riding around on a mule because um of something that we see later on he's riding around on a mule which is what Jesus rode in Jerusalem I don't know if you remember he rides a mule into Jerusalem to show that he is the king because it was kind of like a royal thing to ride on a mule so he's riding this mule around like he is the king in, when he isn't actually the king trying to take over and trying to take control and then it says that um 
basically as he's riding along in the midst of this battle and the battle's in a wood in a woodland um that let me just find the verse uh, oh where is it so they're fighting in a forest anyway and um david has instructed that they shouldn't kill Absalom but then he does unfortunately die oh here it is verse 9 say and Absalom happened to meet the servants of David um Absalom was riding on his mule remember he shouldn't be riding a mule but he was because he thought he was the king and the mule went under thick branches of a great oak and his head caught fast in the oak and he was suspended between heaven and earth while the mule under him went on so he's in the middle of this battle in this fight he's riding on his mule through these thick oak trees and it says he's, his head gets caught in a tree the mule rides on. He's effectively dethroned from his royal position and he ends up hanging there. It says between heaven and earth. His life flashes before his eyes. And later on this, in the chapter, we see that his enemies come against him and basically kill him whilst he's in this vulnerable position. And I, I, I want to say, and I think we see this in our own lives as well as we see it in this chapter and the rest of the scriptures, that there is real danger when you assert yourself to a position of authority in order to basically take control for your own gain like that's what david does and it ends incredibly badly that's what ammon does and it ends incredibly badly now absalom does it here and it ends incredibly badly when you try and take power and control and authority that isn't yours and use it in corrupt ways not to love like the father uses his power and authority to love but to bring about your own gains then it often ends up not working out how you intended or how you ever want it to be. It ends up in this kind of downward spiral where things go out of control. But I just want to remind us this morning that there is another way in which you can have a sense of power and control in your life. And that's not by trying to elevate yourself to the position of king like Absalom did by riding around a mule to assert his authority. But by coming under the authority of the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. And when you come underneath the authority of Jesus, rather than trying to take your own, take control of your own life and create your own authority, when you come under his authority, it brings about a power manifested in your life that is like nothing else you could ever experience. When you go to the New Testament and you read through the book of Acts and you see, you know, the apostles, you see James and John in those early chapters and they're taking authority of demons, they're taking authority of sickness, they're taking authority in many ways over earthly authorities, they get thrown into prison and they break out again. An angel comes and sets them free. It's amazing to see the power and authority that is there in those guys' lives. And that power and authority in their lives doesn't exist because they have somehow tried to elevate themselves to that position so that they can take control over their circumstances. The power and authority that they have in their life comes because they have submitted to the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And by letting Jesus take control of their lives, which wasn't easy. You remember they were petrified, but they let him have control. As they let him have control of their lives, they find that all of a sudden they end up in this position of power and authority where they're seeing great things happen, not for their own self gain, but for the love of God and for the love of people and for the building of a kingdom. And so I pray for you guys this morning that, you know, in the midst of this crisis and this pandemic, as it feels like things are out of control and we'll be tempted to elevate ourselves, you know, to positions of power and authority, to take power and control, control over sometimes other people. It might be your kids. It might be your spouse. It might be people at work. It might be friends. It might be family. It might be people on the Internet. You want to exert your power and your control and somehow try to make things feel better. But actually, that's a subversion of what you actually need. What you actually need to feel in control in this moment is to come to the one who is in all control. Submit yourself to him. And as you become part of his plans and his purposes, then you end up in the position of control and power and authority by default because your name is hid in his your, your life is hid in his, the one who is on high, the king of all kings, the lord of all lords. And when you're swept up in the plans of, and purposes of God, then you no longer have to worry about trying to assert your own authority because you're living in and through and for his authority. And if you don't do that, there is a real danger. Like Absalom here, one day you'll be riding along on your, you know, your metaphorical mule, whatever that might be, your self-asserted authority. And one day you'll be caught by your head and someone will come and kill you. Only joking, it probably won't happen quite it won't happen quite like that, but it will catch you out in the end. It will, you know, you think about David's sin basically trashes his family life. 
Amon's sin basically trashes his, fa his, his, his family's life, his father's life. And the same thing happens in this chapter. And so guys, just don't fall for that trap and for that temptation in this time of making your own authority, your own power. Remember that you have got the power when your life is in Jesus Christ. Live close to him, live for him, live next to him. Where he goes, you go. Where he moves, you move. When he stops, you stop. You follow him relentlessly because in him is the power and the authority. He's the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings. As empires have risen and fallen, as kingdoms have come and gone, his words have stood true. His promises have, you know, been assured to be faithful. He will never let us down. He'll never depart us. He'll never go from us. And he is in control of everything. He's greater than the White House. He's greater than the Kremlin. He's greater than Westminster. You know, he's greater than any political authority on the earth. And when your life is in him, then you will not no longer feel that sense of anxiety and that things are out of control that we often all feel. But to get to that place, we have to keep coming back to him. So let me just pray for us this morning. Father, I thank you that in you, we can escape that rat race of trying to take control of our own lives and create our own authority and run round on our own metaphorical mules, ex ex exalting ourselves as kings in order to find control. Father, we know that it doesn't work. And Lord, we repent of times that we've done that. We say sorry, Father, and for the mess that we have made sometimes of our own families and friends and people at work and people we know. And so, Lord, we now in this moment of prayer, just submit ourselves to your authority. Lord, you are the one that's in control. You are the Lord of all lords. You are the king of all kings. You are the one who is holding the whole universe in your hands. And so, Father, we give this day to you today. And we pray, Lord, your will be done, your kingdom come. Lord, would you use us today in your authority, in your power, just as you used James and John all those years ago, Father, to do mighty things for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, go and have an awesome day today doing whatever you're doing. And remember, you have got the power when your life is in Jesus Christ and nowhere else. Don't be tempted to make it by yourself. Don't be tempted to exert your own authority and your own power. Go and find it in Jesus Christ. He is the one that you need. Have an awesome day and I will see you soon.